At Watch Dojo, we're passionate about one thing, movies. Experience the magic of cinema like never before and be a part of an epic journey beyond the big screen. Watch closely as the story of Christian LaRue unfolds. An eight-year-old boy with a heart full of passion and a dream bigger than life itself. He's on a mission to become the greatest football player to ever grace the field, just like his hero, Cristiano Ronaldo. He is ready to take on the world and prove that he's got what it takes to make it to the national team. So, join us for a heartwarming tale of determination, hard work, and the magic of believing in yourself. The young boy's mother, Kathleen, is a pillar of support for him, but also a realist. She knows that before he can soar, he must learn to walk, and so she advises him to impress his coach with his skills. Meanwhile, Christian's father, George, is away fighting a war in Afghanistan as part of the U.S. Army. As the story unfolds, we are introduced to the LaRue family's rather odd neighbor, Frank. He's got an unsettling habit of hitting on Christian's mother, Kathleen, which always leads to some rather cringe-inducing moments. However, his two sons, Donald and Ed, attend the same football practice as Christian, and Frank takes it upon himself to assist the young boy with pickup and drop-off. As Christian struggles to prove himself on the football field, he's constantly reminded by his peers, including the sons of the cringe-inducing neighbor, Frank, that he doesn't have what it takes to compete at their level. But when the coach, Dominic, gives Christian a chance to shine as the team's new striker, his dreams are quickly crushed as he fails to score a single goal. Feeling defeated and hopeless, Christian turns to his mother for comfort and is reminded of the wise words his father, George, once shared. Never give up, for it brings success, and that is the best revenge. As Christian practices his penalty kicks at home, the ball goes rogue and lands on the neighbor's property, causing a plant apocalypse. The furious old man reprimands him for ruining his beautiful plants. Christian apologizes and shares his aspirations to become the world's best football player. However, the man's hatred for football is palpable and asks him to keep the ball and his dreams away from him. The excitement builds as Dominic's football team, Northern Stars, enters a tournament with parents cheering them on from the stands. However, not everyone is supportive of Christian's talent. Frank, the annoying neighbor, convinces the coach to keep Christian on the bench as a substitute. As the first half comes to an end, Northern Stars performs terribly, causing the coach to become stressed. During halftime, Dominic reminds the team to use the triangle strategy and short passes to move forward and score, and motivates them for the second half. But the team continues to struggle as the clock ticks down, as the game comes to an end, tensions rise as the Northern Stars struggle to score. But in a bold move, Coach Dominic decides to give Christian a chance to shine by putting him in the game. Despite the initial skepticism of the other players, Christian proves to be a valuable asset to the team, displaying impressive skills and a natural talent that was previously overlooked. Though he was unable to score, his team's success in scoring a crucial penalty kick resulted in a one-to-one -one draw. The coach, impressed by Christian's performance, praises him for playing like a true champ. As Christian shines on the field, his father George fights a different kind of battle on the other side of the world. George's commander is severely injured, and his army unit finds themselves in a dire situation as they face enemy forces on all sides. Despite the chaos and danger, George remains steadfast in his commitment to his fellow soldiers, promising to leave no one behind. In a moment of respite, George takes out a picture of his wife and son, his emotions run high, reminding him of what he's fighting for. The next morning, as Kathleen drives back home after dropping her son at school, the phone rings. It's Sergeant William Scott who delivers the shocking news that her husband is MIA. Distract and shaken, Kathleen loses control of her car and crashes. Later that evening, Christian waits for his mother at school, but instead, Frank shows up and takes him to the hospital where they find Kathleen in critical condition. Christian's world is turned upside down as he grapples with the possibility of losing both his father and mother. With no one to turn to, Christian is left in the hands of Frank, who treats him poorly and forces him to live in an abandoned basement while his mother recovers. One day, Frank notices that Christian needs new football boots and takes him to a sports store. However, Frank makes it clear to the store owner that Christian is not his son and requests the cheapest shoes available. That's when the store owner brings out a pair of strange-looking golden shoes. But little did anyone know, these shoes were about to change Christian's life forever. Despite the situation, Christian never complained and accepts what he's given. One day, while practicing alone in his old, worn-out shoes, he's shocked to find himself playing like a pro. It's as if the golden shoes he's wearing have some kind of magical power. 
Meanwhile, Kathleen is fortunate to have a compassionate nurse named Mary White caring for her in the hospital. Mary encourages Kathleen to be strong for her son, explaining that a mother's strength is essential to lifting a child's spirit. A few days later, the Northern Stars are facing a crucial game. With a win, they can secure their spot in the tournament's finals and have a shot at the regional state championship. But when the first half ends, the team is struggling to keep up, and things look bleak. With time running out, Coach Dominic makes a bold decision and replaces Frank's son with Christian for the second half. But when Frank catches wind of this, he throws a fit and tries to get the coach to change his mind. But the coach remains steadfast in his choice, knowing that this is the right move for the team. In a desperate attempt to sabotage Christian's success, Frank plays dirty by blackmailing the coach into returning the money he supposedly lent him in the past. But Dominic refuses to back down and allows Christian to play. With Christian on the field, the game takes a dramatic turn as he scores goal after goal, leaving everyone stunned by his talent. Even the coach whispers, I found my striker. Christian's only friend and goalkeeper of the team, Julian, congratulates him on his impressive performance and encourages him to keep fighting for his mother. But Frank's jealousy knows no bounds. He forces Christian to do the dishes, forbids him from seeing his mother, and even prevents him from calling her. As Christian's skills continue to improve with each game, leading his team to one victory after another. Even his coach, who has struggled with feelings of inadequacy for years, is uplifted by the boy's talents and feels like a winner for the first time in a long time. Soon, his talent and hard work is noted by more than just his coach and teammates. News reporters catch wind of the young football prodigy, and soon Christian's face is plastered on the front page of the newspaper. At the hospital, Mary proudly shows Kathleen a newspaper with Christian's paper, causing her to beam with pride for her son. Kathleen tries to call Christian, but Frank, filled with jealousy and malice, ignores her calls. The night before the final tournament, Dominic contacts a national scout team named Mitch to watch Christian's performance. In the match, Christian exceeds expectations, leading his team to a victory and impressing Mitch as the coach predicted. Christian's popularity continues to soar, with Kathleen watching him on the television, feeling emotional that George is not there to see their son's performance. However, Frank, envious of Christian's success, devises a wicked plan to sabotage him. As Christian's football skills continue to flourish, he starts to wonder if it's all thanks to the mysterious golden shoes he got from the sports store. Determined to test his abilities, he practices penalty kicks, wearing both his old and new pairs. To his surprise, he discovers that he shoots perfectly with the golden shoes, while his shoes from the old pair are awkward and clumsy. Unbeknownst to him, Frank is secretly listening in and soon discovers the boy's secret. Frank tries to convince Christian to give up the golden shoes by offering him a new pair and even attempts to steal them while he's sleeping. But Christian remains resolute and refuses to part with his beloved golden shoes. Christian's pure heart shines through as he selflessly prays not just for himself but also his parents, his team, and even Frank's well-being. As Christian's skills continue to improve, he leads his team to numerous victories in the regional state championship game, taking them to the finals for the very first time. His incredible performance elevates his profile with newspapers and magazines featuring him on their front pages. However, Frank remains cold towards Christian, continuing to dominate him with his harsh demeanor. One day, Kathleen calls Frank to ask about Christian's well-being. But despite Christian being present, Frank refuses to let the two speak. As Christian's story gains national attention, the U.S. president becomes aware of the boy's talent and his family's struggle. He decides to publicly support Christian and his mother, holding a press conference to share their story and promise to help find Christian's missing father. The president even expresses his desire to reunite the family in time for the upcoming game so that George can witness his son's success firsthand. Kathleen receives a surprise visit from the secretary of the president, who informs her of the president's support for her son. Meanwhile, a new group of army forces is set out to search for lost soldiers, and they are successful in locating the MIA soldiers and safely board them home. After the successful rescue of the MIA soldiers, the president called for a press conference to share the news of their safety and reveal their name. Among them was George LaRue, and Kathleen couldn't contain her joy while watching the news on television. As Kathleen watches the news on television, she is overcome with joy and gratitude. The president decides the story is heroic and believes that he has the power to inspire the nation. He then excludes himself from the press conference, saying he has a football game to catch. On the day of the regional state championship final, Christian prepares himself. But, as he tries to leave his basement room, he realizes that he's been locked inside by Frank, who also has stolen his golden shoes. Luckily, the neighbor's dog, who hates football, barks loudly and wakes up its owner. The neighbor sees the commotion and comes over to see what is going on. 
Looking through the basement window's glass, he asks Christian why he should help him. The boy writes a note, saying, Because you are my angel, which touches the man's heart. He immediately breaks the window glass and rescues Christian. Realizing he's late for the game, the man offers to drive him to the stadium in his vintage car. As they are about to leave, Christian sees several football awards in the man's garage and wonders how he got them, given his apparent dislike for the game. The man reveals that he used to be very good at football when he was young, but a serious accident that fractured both his foot and his back forced him to give up the sport. Despite this setback, he had moved on with his life until he saw Christian practicing next door, which rekindled his love for the game. As the match begins, Christian is nowhere to be seen and the team's performance suffers. The coach, Dominic, inquires about Christian's whereabouts, but Frank lies, claiming that the boy is ill and won't be able to play. Just as things seem bleak, Christian finally arrives, but he's missing his golden shoes. He begins to doubt himself, but thankfully, the coach notices his distress and gives him a pep talk. Dominic reminds him that he doesn't need his golden shoes to play well. All he needs is to believe in himself. With Dominic's words echoing in his mind, Christian enters the game and scores his first goal, which boosts his confidence. In the final minutes, he strikes an impressive goal, similar to his idol, Cristiano Ronaldo, and leads his team to victory. Kathleen arrives at the stadium on crutches and is approached by George after an emotional reunion. The couple walks inside to find their son lift the trophy. After the match, the finally finally reunites, and when Frank tries to intervene, Kathleen punches him in the face and tells her husband that she will explain later. Moments later, Mitch approaches them and offers Christian a spot on the international team. The movie ends with the victorious team lifting the trophy. Remember folks, even if you don't have golden shoes, believe in yourself and you might just score the winning goal. But please, leave the punching to Kathleen.